So greetings and merry meet. My question for you today is if you could redesign your life and work beginning in this very moment, would you consider creating a world with dragons and magic? If a magical life appeals to you, you are in for a treat. I am Dr. Catherine Bingham, founder of Leadistics, a veteran and women owned small business that helps women and men to embrace their leadership, change their life, change their work, and change the world. And I am the newly released author um, with the book Driving Pink. Today, my guest is Katie Cross, author of, I think, 40 books. Yeah, yep, that sounds yep. right. <laughs> Including some of my favorites, the Dragon Master Trilogy, the Network Series, the Network Saga Series. Um, Katie also has a number of clean romance, including the coffee shop series. And I love the tagline for her site. It's epic magic wild places. So yes, we are going to talk about Katie's latest writing collaborations with other authors and the magical world of Alcara. And we're going to explore how she made the powerful choice to redesign her life. So welcome, Katie, and thank you for sharing some time with us today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Your question like has me tingling. I'm so, <laughs> so excited to talk about this. This is like my happy place. This is going to be so fun. Awesome. Awesome. So I really like beginning these conversations with a guest's journey because I believe that, you know, sometimes people see the end result in someone else's life and they think well I can't do that you know I can't reinvent myself redesign my life make a big pivot they have this sense of being locked in but when they hear a story describing someone's journey then making that change for themselves self becomes more accessible so tell us a bit about how you started in your career and some of the obstacles you were experiencing yeah. Yeah. I love talking about this because stories are so powerful, right? I think mm -hmm. we find ourselves in other people's stories. So I actually, my story as an author began somewhere around first grade. I loved books. I was reading at an 11th grade level in second grade because I couldn't stop reading. I had some tough moments in my childhood and I escaped into worlds of dragons and fantasy and girls that could handle their problems. And so I just went into that world willingly and I just read and then I started writing stories in my journal. I would just write stories at the end of the day. So fast forward, I went to college. I actually got my bachelor's in nursing, <laughs> which is so nothing to do with writing. It's the absolute opposite. And I was working as a nurse in a downtown city and met my husband, who was in the army at the time. And I decided to marry him because he was wonderful. So I went into the military spouse life willingly. We, I bounced from the West Coast over to the East Coast when we got married, and I quickly found my nursing career dissolving in my hands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I remember people telling me, uh, you know, he's going to be gone all the time. He's going to miss a lot of things. And I was like, yeah, I'm fine with that. Like, I don't, I don't need him there for anniversaries. But no one told me my career was going to go up in smoke. Because it's hard as a nurse to move every six months. You have to switch license, like licenses and interstate compact and all this stuff came up. So I was in the middle of Southern Alabama, like 25, 26 years old, and I had no job. Mm -hmm. and I felt like I had absolutely no purpose. And I, I was like, well, I have to do something because we didn't have kids. We only had a dog. <laughs> and I was like, you know, I was talking to my husband. I said, maybe I'll keep writing because... All of the time that passed from first grade to then, I was writing stories always. It was my, the way I coped with my world was through story. I would be working night shifts on Google Drive, just hammering out stuff that was terrible and didn't make sense. And I said, maybe, maybe I could actually just do this more often. So I started writing a book that is terrible and will never see the light of day. And I will never let anyone read it again. And... Then I found a website that had other people just like me that you could post your story and people could read it and comment. And it was kind of a review site and you earned money if you reviewed other people's stories and they had challenges and prompts. 
So I started a prompt, and it was the first chapter for my book, Miss Mabel's School for Girls, and it won an award, and a bunch of people asked for the next chapter. So I was like, okay. So I wrote the next <laughs> chapter and the next, and then they wanted the whole book. So every single day, I would write a new chapter, and I would post it, and people would comment, and it would go to the top of the list, and people loved it and were following it. So I started, like thinking, well, maybe I could publish this, like people like it. So I started to immerse myself in the self-publishing world. At this point, we moved to North Carolina mm -hmm. and I decided to get a job as a home health nurse because I had a little more time there. So I would write these books and work night shifts as a home health nurse. So I could write the books while I was, these kids were sleeping that I was taking care of. And I decided to self-publish because I liked the idea of being able to control the way my book showed up in the world. Mm -hmm. There's a couple routes in publishing. There's traditional, there's self-publishing. And I liked the idea of, of being able to guide the boat, so to speak. I think a lot of entrepreneurs will like understand that sentiment. And I started to publish books and it went really well and people wanted more, but more importantly, I was really happy. So <clears throat> A couple years later, we were stationed in Fort Carson, Colorado, and I had to decide, am I going to keep working as a nurse or am I going to invest in myself as an author in this totally unexpected thing that I never saw coming? And I just decided to go full time into writing. And that's what I did. And I haven't ever gone back to nursing since. And that was six or seven years ago now wow. that it took me a while to let my nursing license expire, but I have since let my license expire as a way to just mentally be all in to my writing career. And that is where we landed me today. I love it. I love it. And I think, you know, women in gen general and military spouses in particular often follow a spouse and it's not always women, but but in the military, men can follow their female military, but it's much more often the other way around. And, and I don't think people really get how significant those impacts are to someone's career. So you started with Miss Mabel's School for Girls, and at and, and for the people who are listening who are not familiar with the series, this is the world building of Alcara. And now you had me at Dragons because I started and we're going to talk about it a bit with um, Flame and how people can get into the Dragon Master series. But I became a huge fan in part because your writing features these strong female leads, right? They choose um, adventure and they choose unconditional paths. So could you introduce to our listeners this world that they may not be familiar with your series and talk to us how you chose to craft these particular characters? Yeah, absolutely. So my fantasy world is Alcara. And it's a big, sprawling, beautiful, hot mess fantasy world. Um, for anyone that kind of wants to be able to picture it, it's a medieval-esque time period, but with magic. Everyone that is there in the world of Alcara is a witch. So I don't really say people or person. The collective term is just witch. So they are able to do magic. And there are spells and incantations and magical creatures like dragons, um, fairies. The, the fairies don't feature a lot. Mermaids are recently introduced. Um, and then I've made up some fantasy creatures like baluas and condors and that stuff. Um, <clears throat> it really, um, the, the formation of my strong female characters and these imperfect women that are, are striving to show up in the world they, the way they want to, I think is largely influenced by my childhood. I was raised by a single mom and mm -hmm. I had a grandma that was really close by. She was just a couple miles away that often helped take care of me. And then I have two aunts that never married that work are like career women and help take care of me and my family. And they were big influences for me. So my whole life I was surrounded by these really powerful independent women. And I think I just learned when you need something done, you just figure it out. Like, you know, and 
And if you want, if you want a life, you actually have to make it. I, I, that was a truth I understood really young. Like if I want a certain path, I have to make that path happen. And I like to explore those themes through my characters because my goal was to put characters in the world so other people, not just girls, but other people could really understand that they held the power and they didn't need to wait for someone else to go and create their adventure and find their magic and their wild places. That's awesome. And by the way, folks, I highly recommend the Dragon Master trilogy. It's awesome. And you can get Flame, which is the very first book for free on Katie's website. And we'll be sharing that at the close. And you will also be able to find the links in the description for the video. So all of that will be there. So you've become, Katie, a successful author. What does that mean? mean to you and how has that changed your life and your time with your family oh gosh i how do you even like quantify the impact here so yeah quote unquote successful author is a really interesting term yes because it's it's so varying right everyone has different definitions and idea of successes um in the most basic terms i help support my family on the money that i make from from being an author so there is financial success. There is a lot of growth. There is knowledge of my brands. There is readership out there. Over the last eight years, it's been a very messy, sometimes desperate path, you know, as I, as I climb the different mountains that publishing has put in front of me. But I really define it as most successful because I run a company that helps me put goodness back into the world to create a place for readers to go to like find their courage again mm -hmm. and allows me freedom. So one of the biggest, maybe the biggest value that I run my life by is the idea of freedom. So being an author, having pivoted away from nursing into this means that I control my schedule. I control the way my company runs. And that means I get to be more present for my family, like when my family needs it the most. So. Yesterday, for example, I have a four-year-old and a seven-year-old, <laughs> and we live in the mountains in Montana. So we live in the mountains in Montana because I love wild places, and I specifically love mountains, mm -hmm. and they fill me. Like, my heart and my soul are happy in these wild places. So we live here because it allows me to keep doing, like, producing creatively what I produce and to give my kids the life that I want. So my career has allowed me to do that, to have the flexibility to live in the place that, that makes me my most powerful self. And like yesterday, my kids and I went on a hike and we took a picnic and we just played in the forest and I was able to shove aside work responsibilities to different parts of the day because I control my schedule. So I was able to make that slice of life for them happen and we just had an amazing time. And then I came back home and looked at my schedule and what had to be accomplished for work and for family. And I was able to kind of shunt it all into the places where it belonged. So without having gone out on that ledge and decided to leave nursing behind, I wouldn't have this freedom of lifestyle that I am so blessed to have now. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm going to circle back to something you mentioned earlier, which goes into this idea of self-publishing, but even more so um, buying books directly from authors and why that's important. But before that, I want to touch on some of the connections that you've made with fans and the collaborations that you're starting um, and actually coming to fruition with some other authors. So tell us a bit about that. Yeah, so the collaboration with another author actually came about because of the other author. So Derek Sidaway is his name. He uh, and I sort of like I had sort of seen him in online groups and just in circles. I didn't know him. And he I think he reached out to me and introduced himself and started a conversation over email. And then we had some things in common. And so we started meeting over Zoom and talking about projects. And he sort of brought it up to me like our readership is really similar. Would you be interested in doing a uh, like a collaborative work. And I was pretty resistant at first because of that value of freedom that I hold. I didn't want to be beholden to another author for mm -hmm. 
like I don't want to have to pay someone for the rest of my life for split royalties. And eventually we were able to kind of work out, well, if we did it this way, that would appeal to me. And so we were able to be a really good fit, actually, because we structured it that in the way that leans to his strengths and my strengths. So he loves the first drafting process and I love the editing process. So we work together to develop the storyline and the the emotional beats for the reader and where the character growth occurs. And then he starts the first draft. He lets me know if, if I have questions, but he has freedom to make decisions as the plot moves and unfolds in his mind. And then I come back and I do a rewrite and edit so that I know it's appealing to my readership. It's the full bodied story that I want. And then he has another pass to make sure he agrees with what I've done. And we do it all online through Google Docs because we can tag each other in comments and say, hey, like, look at this or this. And what do you think about this? And then we just have discussions back and forth over Zoom over what's working, how we serve our readership best, that kind of Mm -hmm. thing. It's the first I will outside of doing some anthologies, but that's kind of different. It's the first I will have co-written something with someone. And I've loved the process. We're working on the second book. The first book is all done. And we're going to be launching them all next year so that they're all just kind of ready to go. And it's been a really amazing process. It's a fun new step in my career I haven't done before. And I really like building off of other people's ideas and pulling collaboration into what's really kind of a lonely process in writing books. And one of the things that you've done and you've done well is create engagement with your readers. You you mentioned Facebook, I think. If not, it's just because I happen to know about it. And you also have um, Coffee with Katie. (laughs) (laughs) And oh, by the way, folks, I'm there every week on Friday, unless the one week I had to go to Miami. But, But it is a place and you... You wonder this idea of um, being plugged in perhaps to young adult readers. Well, the young adults <laughs> are a huge range. I mean, we are young at heart a lot and not necessarily conventionally young. <laughs> so, yes. so, but it's fun. It is a time where you connect, um, it's a time for us to connect with people who are reading similar things. And we don't just talk about the books. We talk about all kinds of things. But it's yeah. an, a, a, another level of fan engagement that I don't think other authors are always able to do successfully, right? Yeah. So, you know, it's a fun it's a fun element of you become a Katie Cross reader. You can, you know, go many other wild places that you might not anticipate having been a reader of other books. Let's get back to this idea of self-publishing and um, forgive me everyone, I'm going to put on my soapbox or I'm going to step up on my soapbox for a minute because I want to go back historically, you know, centuries, centuries. The, um, The church initially controlled thoughts, ideas, stories, right? They had the monasteries filled with monks who very studiously transcribed and copied books by hand. And the people who had access to these works were typically nobility or the extremely wealthy, right? So at that point, the populace really by and large couldn't read. They they had to get their ideas from the folks who actually held on to them and and they weren't shared well. So enter the printing press, right? Now more people, it pushes down to the merchant class, more people can pay to get their thoughts and ideas out. And out of this comes this business model where people thought, well, I can become a publisher. And again, they could still control the thoughts and the stories that got out. However, they did the um, humanity at large a service because more people began to read. Even they would publish things like the Little Penny novels, right, to get more broad readership. That was a real blessing. But still, there was this idea of who controlled what got published and who got published. 
And there's, you know, if we move way past the longhand and the typewriter for submitting manuscripts, um, for years, even when we moved to the digital age, when authors could then really create their own book and have it available digitally, traditional publishers still controlled by saying, oh, you know that self-publishing, that's not really a valuable thing. And they gave it the term vanity press, right? If you were gonna pay for it yourself, that was a part of vanity press and that was nowhere near as legitimate as going through traditional publishing. And there's maybe a teeny, teeny bit, but that has gone away. And, and we then moved into this idea of really legit indie press. We went into the Amazon world. Amazon snapped up a bunch of those indie tools that self-publishers were using. And so even though self-publishing is no longer a stigma, there's this control still over, you know, you create your art and you put it out there and someone chooses how you will benefit from your art. And so I tell this whole long history because I don't know that readers have questioned the business model of how they get their books. Mm. I think this is a new place for people to begin having questions like who chose this, right? Who chose this and how do we reward our authors? And so you are one of several authors who are making books available for direct purchase. So tell us a little bit about how readers get your books and why that was an important decision for you as an author. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a really it's a really fun question because some of this is really new and and growing. So right now in in your typical publishing market for young adult fantasy, you're going to have a lot of rock stars on the Kindle platform. So most people are making the most money and having the most success on Kindle through a program called Kindle Unlimited. And it's where you can put your books into the Kindle Unlimited program and readers can read it and the author gets paid for every page that is read. There's a, a few stipulations. You can only have your ebooks available on the Kindle platform. So you couldn't put it on Nook, you couldn't sell it yourself. And so for some authors, that's worth it to them because it's easier. You can just put mm -hmm. your book in one place. And then every time someone read is, reads a page, you get paid. It's like 0 0.0014 cents or something. And it goes down pretty much every month. So it, it works out to just under a dollar, maybe a little bit more for an average size book, which may or may not be good depending on the genre or the author or whatever. What I do is I run katiecrossbooks.com and you can go to my website and purchase a book and then you get an email with the link to download that book onto any of your ebook readers or you can download an app called BookFunnel and you can read my books through BookFunnel. It's a pretty um, difficult and significant business model right now because we have IT giants like Kindle or Nook or Kobo that have these e-readers that they have more control over, they have market share, they have millions on millions on millions of dollars, and people know their brand just by name. So for me to run katiecrossbooks.com and sell books directly to my readers without big tech controlling any of the decisions or the way it shows up on the website or the internet, it's kind of a risky little gamble. The reason I do it is 100% based on being able to give my reader a better experience because I can make it easier for them to find the next book that they want. There's not a ton going on on the product pages. Like if you go to Amazon right now, Amazon, Amazon advertising is called AMS, has exploded in the publishing world the last five to six years. So there are just book recommendations splashed everywhere. And you might go looking for my first book, Flame, but you're gonna get distracted and confused and it's there's nowhere that I can really put the reading order on the Amazon mm -hmm. page so that you know where mm -hmm. to start and you know it's it can just be difficult that way so I realized that I could produce books faster with higher quality and an ease of of like process for my readers through doing it through my own website the other reason I do it is 
because big tech, I mean, you're playing in their sandbox, Mm -hmm. right? So they change rules all the time and they flex their power all the time. And I have friends that have had significant impacts to their careers because an Amazon bot decided that they were doing something wrong, which they weren't, and, and removed all of their books from the store and refused to pay royalties. I have friends that are missing out on over $10,000 in royalties because Amazon decided not to pay them. So it was a way to create a better experience for my readers because I had more consistent control over how they got the books. That's awesome. I know I, I like, I just published and I've not had, you know, I've not gone out to do a lot because I'm trying to, in marketing, because I'm trying to do some other things, but um, I had a couple of reviews and they were there, right? The, the narrative and everything was there. And then all of a sudden they're gone. They're just gone. Amazon decided, well, nope, <laughs> you, they're not there yeah. anymore. So there's so they a, sent their reviews. Yep. They sent yeah. Their reviews. And I, I'm like, why is that? I, I don't know. So that's a topic for another day, but you know, if you're thinking back this journey of yours to this idea of wanting something different for your life and for your work, what advice would you offer someone who's facing or seeking change for themselves? Hmm. That's a great question. So if you're in a position where you're like maybe not happy and you're, you're wanting to change something or you're afraid because there's a big pivot and you want to make it, but it's, it's hard. Like it's hard Mm -hmm. to go away from the known and the safe into something unknown and uncertain. I think the best advice that I can have for anyone is to make sure that what you're going into is something that brings you that spark of life and passion that you're missing now, you know, and that you're, it's, it's not a move out of fear. Cause if you're making a decision out of fear, you're going to sabotage yourself and it's going to spiral. But if you're moving into something that just brings you that excitement and that zest for life and the willingness to get up at four in the morning and make the stuff happen, <laughs> then I, I think that that means you're on the right path. Like you're going into a place where better is going to open up for you because you're going to make it happen because you're excited. I like that. I like that. So before we conclude, let's ask the audience to answer a question. I always, I always plug something into these so they can stick things down in the comments, right? So first, if you're already a reader of Katie Cross, we want you to share your favorite book in the comments below, right? That's the first thing we're going to ask you to do. And second, what I'd like you to do is let us know that what would it be if you were to reinvent, redesign, or pivot your life? Imagine it's all magical and you can make it happen. Just put your next step. What is that next step that you would take in the comments below? Right? We, we, we want to hear from you and i promise that i do actually (laughs) respond to comments when they occur so if you plug one in i will they send me a little email and i'll come back and and engage with you so katie do you have any final thoughts before we close out i just want to encourage anyone that's kind of on that cusp or thinking about changing their life to just do it Awesome. <laughs> right. Yeah. Do it slowly and and with what what's like I want to say temperance, but make your yes. life change slowly and easily and without high expectation and little things add up to big things over time. That's right. That is absolutely right. I like that. So Katie, thank you so much for your time. And I want to thank everyone who's taken the time to listen in on this conversation. You can find all of Katie Cress's books. She has ebooks, she has paperbacks, she has audio versions. Um, the website is katiecrossbooks.com. And you can still find some things on Amazon if that's your thing. But I so (laughs) encourage you to go to katiecrossbooks.com. And by the way, I will include a link in the description, again, where you can buy her books at a discount. But before you do that, 
go on the home page of Katie Cross Books, you can get Flame, the very first book of the Dragon Master series for free. Get the free one, get the free one. And then you can go back and use my link in there to get a discount. Um, so beyond the website, how else would you like readers to connect with you? Yeah, so I'm on Instagram at kcrosswriting. Uh, I don't go there quite as much, but I am definitely still there. And then we have a really fun, amazing Facebook group called The Witchery. If you just mm -hmm. type in The Witchery on Facebook, there's almost 2,000 other readers in there that are ready to be your best friend. We call it the Alcara family <laughs> because we all are quite close and we have a lot of fun and it's really active and amazing things happen in there. So that's a really fun place if you're on Facebook. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, with one more thank you, I just want to encourage you to go forth and do great things and merry part. Merry part. Thank you so much for having me, Catherine. <laughs> all right.